is less than 90 degree so when you have less than 90 degree you have acute angle right so for acute angle you have concave upwards meniscus for obtuse angle you have convex upwards meniscus and plain angle you have flat meniscus now coming to the topic capillarity what is meant by capillarity see i have this tube in this water filled i filled this container completely I am filling this container completely with water and I have inserted a tube. I'll notice there will be a level of the water. Now what will I do? Now I have taken a... I have taken even a narrow... See here class, what will happen when you will take such a narrow tube you will automatically see that the level of water is rising up this will be the level of water what was the actual level of water? able to see water level till here all right now one more example one more example class see if i have taken a container i I keep mercury, mercury in it. Now I have taken tubes. Now when I put a tube, Mercury in this tube is just this much. What is the actual level of mercury? Level of mercury, let's say the level of mercury is still here. This is the level of mercury. This is the level of mercury. But what is the level in this tube? This much. So what has happened just now? Class, this is known as capillarity, what I have written. This is exactly known as capillarity. The rise of liquid or capillary or capillary action. When even students must have done their, their experiments or students who have biology, you must have heard of xylem. Xylem also takes up the or water in this manner only. No? In biology, this example is given. So through capillarity action only because the stem girth is very less. So whenever you have a very narrow tube, so that rise, uprise or downfall, that is known as capillarity. Now you have a formula for it, ascent formula. So a formula is very simple class. A formula is very simple for it. Here also you will do the same thing. We'll take, here we will take test tubes. Fine, here we'll take test tubes. Let's mark some different, different points. Let's take some different, different points. Now see here what will happen. You have taken one point. Here exactly atmospheric pressure will be applied, right? Exactly at atmospheric pressure will be applied. So let's say this point is A. Now I am taking here point B. I want to calculate the pressure at this point B. Just a second. Yes, now see, at this point, if I take, so pressure here, what will, what, uh, what will be the pressure? Class, one more pressure will get added here. The pressure which we studied in the last class, the surface tension pressure, that was excess of pressure. That will also be there, no? Because what will happen? Ultimately, till here, this is the maximum limit. But water stays at such a height. So there will be an excess of pressure within. So net resultant 
net resultant if you say so see on introducing capillary tube in liquid pressure at convex side is less than concave side it means whatever pressure is inside this is more because of excess of pressure we did excess of pressure in the last class if any doubts you have you can ask me and this is less than the pressure at convex side so pressure at a point becomes exactly at the atmospheric pressure and pressure at b point becomes pa minus 2 sr s by r or you can write pb as i, I can write pa as the atmospheric pressure minus 2 s by r and 2 s by r is excess of pressure where this s is the surface tension all right this is surface tension so if we take point c outside the capillary tube same level as that of p means if you you have taken one more point one more point outside fine if you take one more point outside it the outside the capillary tube all right so pressure at that point even if you take a point here exactly at the level of b here let's say this point you take it here Here. If you take this point here, also atmospheric pressure will be applied, right? Here you take C. Here also atmospheric pressure will be applied. So now C. C will also be equal to P naught. That is the atmospheric pressure. Now, no pressure. is the screen sharing with yes miss just sharing the screen all right now see here what i was saying that p net pressure at this point means where you have to calculate one pressure due to the excess of pressure that we have to subtract because it is excess of pressure and it is the difference One will be h rho g. Why h rho g? Because one pressure will be due to the liquid column also. No, this liquid column will also be. Liquid will flow only if liquid flow will only stop if all the pressures become equal. This is equal to atmospheric pressure. P B becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure. Then only it will stop. If this becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure, that is P naught, then only no the liquid flow will stop. Whatever is the pressure, if atmosphere exerts pressure from outside, it won't let the fluid to move out. So it means if we equate P naught minus two s by T plus h rho g, this gets cancelled. You get h rho g equal to two s by T. Right, two s by t h rho g. So from here, value of h is two s by 
from here this is uh, 2s by r this one is 2s by r this is 2s by r so this will become because this is the radius not radius of the sphere so this becomes 2s by h r rho g this is the form r rho g this is the ascent height 2 is a constant s is surface tension g is acceleration due to gravity r is radius of meniscus r is radius of meniscus now see i am repeating till here then we'll do it further here i have taken a point b forget about a point forget about b, c point just focus on b point even if i have b point one pressure will be excess pressure that will be exerted by the liquid column one pressure will be h rho g that is the pressure exerted by liquid column and one will be the atmospheric pressure that will be stopping the liquid so if you write that equation it, this will become p not minus 2s by r plus h rho g now if the liquid is there and atmospheric pressure is not letting it out then only the liquid will not flow so you will this entire equation with p not the liquid will rise in the radius of meniscus see what is meant by radius of meniscus i'll show you here look here one is your tube this is your meniscus so if you complete this circle this radius of meniscus will be there a radius will be there for the meniscus meniscus was this this curve that was obtained was the meniscus if you extend it you can get a circle that is the radius of meniscus capital r this that i have written capital r is the radius of meniscus fine now class if we take the test tube one radius of tube will also be there that i have taken as small r do you see two radii are there one is the radius of the liquid liquid meniscus other is the radius of the tube so if you have are given just the information of radius of of tube and here you have radius of meniscus so how will you substitute it so here if you look in this triangle what did i do small r was the radius of tube this is the tube this is the radius this entire is the radius of meniscus capital r i have taken so if i join it it forms a triangle here now in this triangle o 1 o m this entire triangle if i write cos theta here that will become base by hypotenuse so here you if you write if you take base that is small r hypotenuse is capital r so capital r's value i have obtained r by cos theta now let me substitute this value 2s was there 2s will be here as well here it was 2s here also it will be 2s instead of capital r i'll write r by cos theta cos theta will go up and what is left now rho g this is the value of height of the liquid that will rise by now this small r is not radius of meniscus this is the radius of the tube this is not the radius of meniscus this is radius of the tube so this derivation is asked in the examination you just have to write down these points and tell all the points still here rho r 2 uh, s cos theta by r rho g this formula is asked now one thing you have to remember this formula because many numericals are there which involve this formula 
All right, so note it down. We'll practice some questions also from this, but first note down this part. Any doubts if you have, get it clarified.
Three class one uh, theory question comes, conceptual question that comes. It says that if the liquid tube is of insufficient length, like if this is the tube, let's say, this is the tube. Now, if I say water level is increasing, increasing, whatever liquid is kept, this is increasing in here. It is taking up all the water. It is increasing, increasing. So what will happen if this is taking up all the water and it has reached up, then what, what will happen? Will it burst like a fountain or what happens? So if insufficient is there, so liquid cannot emerge in the form of fountain from upper end of shock. Uh, short capillary tube the way when we pour water in glass and if the water is more than the capacity of glass the water keeps on falling but this does not happen in case of capillary tube because it will violate the law of conservation of energy so here what happens radius of the meniscus increase so that liquid does not spill means water is taken up by the tube completely filled here what what will it do just the radius of meniscus will increase at the edge. Like this, the radius of meniscus will increase. And it will be exactly on the capillary tube. If this is the capillary tube, this was the radius of tube, you will see like this. This is just a theory-based question that comes. Then you have practical applications of capillarity. Like uh, when you use uh, in lamps, cotton wicks are placed. So oil rises in cotton wicks only. You have lamps and in the lamp, you keep a cotton wick. So all the oil is oil goes up to the cotton wick through capillarity only. Or uh, the example which I gave you of xylem, that it absorbs water in the stem. It takes up all the water and because of the capillarity or action of the stem, it takes up all the water. You must have seen fountain pens. Fountain pens have such ends. This type of end is possessed by a fountain pen. Pen is there. So here what happens, this end nib is very, is having a very fine slit. So when you dip it into the solution, this takes up the ink. So these are some examples of, practical examples of capillarity. So this we did. Now see here, Again, theta is involved. 2s cos theta by r rho g, where r is radius of uh, the radius of the tube. So see, if you if your theta is acute, means less than 90 degree, for example, for water, if this is acute, right? So you will get this term also as positive. If this term is positive, you will get this term as positive. Somehow, if your theta becomes ob obtuse, like cos 120 degree, that is minus half. So if this is negative, height will also become negative. So exam there you have fall, like mercury example I gave you. If you keep the tube in mercury, level decreases in the tube. While you take water, level increases in the tube. That is because of angle, angle of contact that is made. Uh, we'll practice some questions. First, uh, note down this part.
now let's practice one or two questions from this topic before we move on to hydro dynamics now see here this says that a glass u tube with a diameter 3 mm and 6 mm it means if i take up the container If I take up the container, see here, if you take a container, you have kept a YouTube. So one is of the smaller diameter, one is of narrower diameter. See here, this is of smaller diameter. This diameter is greater, wider, and we there is water in the beaker. All right. Water is there in the beaker. So this diameter is how much? This is given as 3 millimeter. And this is given as 6 millimeter. So this is one height H1 where the water to which the water will rise. This will be another height H2 to which the water, water level will rise. So you have to find out the difference between these to which the water level rises. So see how will you write it. You have surface tension. Theta is also given 0. First find out H1. First find out H1. Now formula of H will remain. 2s cos theta by r rho g. Fine. So how will we write h1? 2. We'll write 2. Surface tension 0 0.07. Cos theta cos 0 is 1. Radius. Radius is different. See for h1. That is the narrower one. Diameter is 3 millimeter. So radius will be 1.5 millimeters. So this becomes 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 3. Density of water is 10 to the power 3. Acceleration due to gravity is 10. Fine. And what is what will be H2C? 2 again. Then surface tension. Surface tension will be 0 0.07. Cos 0 will again be 1. Now diameter. Diameter D1, D2, R1, this is 6 millimeter, so radius will be 3 millimeters. We'll write 3 into 10 to the power minus 3. This is 10 to the power 3 and acceleration due to gravity 10. Height will be h2 minus h1. This you have to calculate. Quickly note it down. Tell me what is the height difference that you are getting. At least this much calculation you can do. Take things that are common and then subtract it using LCM. Yes, yes, Arif, that also you can do. If you can, that is fine. You can calculate it individually and then subtract.
C class done. Written the above part. Or are you still writing? See here. Now, if I incline the tube, this was the straight tube that was kept in the water. Now, if this is inclined to certain angle, what will be the change? See here, class. Even if this angle gets changed, this was the water level initially till here. Now, the water level is here. If the height above water level, this height is there. Even if you incline it, you will consider this perpendicular height also. Do not calculate this height. Just calculate the perpendicular height. Even if you have tilted the tube. Till here you are getting the water level. So take the perpendicular height. Calculate this from the water level. All right. Why am I saying? Because the next question is based on this. Noted, note down this point. Then I'll discuss it. Or let me just discuss this first. Then you can note it down. See here. It says that water rises in a capillary tube to height 2 centimeters. And if another capillary tube whose radius is one third of it, how much water will rise? Fine. If the first capillary tube is inclined at an angle of 60 degree with respect to vertical, what will be position of water in tube? See, if this is inclined at 60 degree with respect to vertical, this means this is the tube, this is the vertical. This angle is 60 degree. We always consider this angle 30 degree to find out the height. It's like this is the tube. This angle is 60 degree. We have to find out this. So this will be 30 degree. Do not use 60 here. You will be using 30 degree. And class, for the first part also, how much water will rise? Instead of writing everything, just remember, Height into radius of tube will be constant. So if you write H1 R1, even if you write this, H1 R1 is equal to H2 into R2, this will be same. Now, why do we use this relation? Because see, in the first part, it is mentioning radius is one third of it. Radius is one third of it. This means R2 is R by 3. So that becomes H1. H1 is given as 2 centimeters. Let me use 2 centimeters only. 2 into R. H2 is to be calculated. R2 is R by 3. H2 becomes 6 centimeter. This is answer for the first part. Secondly, it says that what will be the position of tube if this is inclined. So C class, what difference will come if it is inclined? Look here. If it is inclined, then you will take sine 30 degree. This will be the triangle no, for you. This was the edge of tube. This is the height that you want to calculate. So calculate, take sine 30. Perpendicular and hypotenuse will be involved in sine 30. That will be H by L. So sine 30. Height was, initial height was 2 centimeter. Length is so half into 2. Uh, so 2 into 2, that will become 4 centimeter. This is how you use same method you will apply. One new term was this R, H into R is constant. This you will use. Secondly, if this is inclined, you will still cut, take out and calculate the perpendicular height H only. This. Fine. Note it down from here. Make a note point. Any doubts you have, you can ask me. I'll repeat any point.
तो क्लास दैट कंप्लीट विद आर हाइड्रोस्टैटिक्स now we'll we are allowed to use the terms acceleration velocity for liquid now the liquid will be in motion it will be at it can be at rest also it can be in motion also but before that earlier when we were dealing with hydrostatics we didn't use any of the motion of the fluids right so this hydrodynamics is that branch of physics that only deals with the properties of fluid in motion so we'll have various theories you have bernoulli's theorem you have stokes law you have viscosity is a very basic topic so we'll start first with viscosity now why are we doing viscosity first because this is as basic as friction whatever work friction did it whatever work friction did in solids same work is done by viscous force in liquids in fluids uh, to be precise i would use the term fluids so what happens how does it opposes see let's say these are different different layers of the fluid these are different layers of fluid what happens is that these layers of fluid when they move let's say the force is acting they are the direction of their motion is here here they are moving in this direction fine they are moving in this direction so motion is in this direction what will happen an opposing force will act in the opposite direction to reduce their motion so this force is known as viscous force and this so when these layers of atmosphere when the layers of this these move these layers move with each other these are the various various layers so when the layers of fluids are moving there will be an opposite motion in the backward direction or an opposition that will come this is known as viscosity so here is the definition also backward dragging force is developed which opposes the motion of liquid it acts tangentially on the layers when a liquid or fluid flows a backward dragging force or viscous force is developed between its layers that retards the motion of the liquid means opposes the motion of it slows down like in force of friction force of friction that acts in solids in air what happens in when friction force acts it opposes the motion it acts in the direction opposite to the motion so same way viscous force acts in but in terms of fluid so viscous drags acts tangentially on the layers of liquid now what is the formula for it these are the layers let's say this is one layer of liquid i have just taken two layers for the calculation purpose this is another layer of liquid let's say their separation is dx because the layers are separated by a very small distance so i have taken their separation between the layers as dx this is moving with velocity v so the relative motion this will be dv v plus dv dv is just a little slight change in velocity velocity relative velocity we are calculating so velocity will change also so if all these layers are moving with v velocity this is just additional relative velocity that is added now if they are moving let's say they are moving towards the right hand side so viscous force will act on the left hand side opposite direction now on what all things is this viscous force proportional on or all or on what things this viscous force depends so now see viscous force this is directly proportional to the area of the layer of fluid let's say a is the area of this layer of liquid it can be rectangle any area so it is proportional to the area of the liquid it is directly proportional to dv over dx that is velocity gradient dv is velocity dx is separation distance so fv becomes directly proportional to a dv over dx right if i combine all of these so now see to remove the proportionality i will put a constant which is re represented by the symbol eta a dv over dx 
this symbol is known as coefficient of viscosity this is coefficient of viscosity fine this is fv is what fv is the viscous force fv is the viscous force a is area and dv over dx is velocity gradient now this depends on two things only it depends on nature of material and also temperature it depends on just two factors one nature of material and another temperature fine see here the increase in velocity divided by distance this is known as simply viscosity gradient is written increase in velocity dv over dx this is not viscosity gradient we will write it as velocity gradient this is not viscosity gradient this is velocity gradient all right note it down
see this question says that calculate the horizontal force required to move a metal plate of area 2 into 10 to the power minus 2 with a viscous velocity of 4.5 into 10 to the power minus 2. Look here, area is given as 2 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter square. Velocity is given as uh, 4.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter per second. This is dv. dx is 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 3. Why? Because this much thick. Coefficient of viscosity eta is given as 2 newton per meter square now look here newton second per meter square now look here you just have to find out viscous force so viscous force is eta a dv over dx so put in the values fv will be eta is 2 area is 2 into 10 to the power minus 2 velocity is 4.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 divided by dx is 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 3. So 4, this gets cancelled. This becomes 3. 3 into 4 is 12. So 12 into 10 to the power minus 4 by 10 to the power minus 3. That will be 12 into 10 to the power minus 1 or simply you can write it as 1.2 Newton. Note down this question. One last question I'll do with you. Then I'll leave you all. Uh, you can note down this point. These were also left, but first note down this question, then we'll discuss it. See, coefficient of viscosity is this only. From the formula, look here. From the formula, F is equal to eta A dV over dx. If I write eta, eta will become this coefficient of viscosity. This will become F multiplied by dx divided by A dV. Now, if I put the formula of each of the terms, force is Newton 
फोर्स आई हैव केप्ट इट एज न्यूटन डी एक्स मीटर लेंथ मीटर एरिया मीटर स्क्वेर वेलोसिटी मीटर पर सेकेंड मीटर पर सेकेंड सो मीटर मीटर गेट्स कैंसल्ड ऐसा यूनिट becomes newton seconds per meter square so this in writing this in every time is difficult no this is a tedious work so that's why we have a unit which is known as decapoise and cgs unit is poise so decapoise is only used for the si unit of coefficient of viscosity so i have already told you it depends on temperature so how it depends on temperature inversely proportional for liquids and directly proportional for gas so this is the effect of temperature decker poise is the si unit cgs unit is poise uh this you don't need to write uh, write down just this part till here look this question says a metal plate of 0.1 meter square is connected to 0.01 mass via string that passes over an ideal pulley it means this is the table top you have the block like this here is the pulley here is a mass connected here is the mass connected and in between a viscous material is added then it is asking this is asking here tension will be applied in the string here weight mg will be applied here viscous force will be applied so we have to find out the coefficient of viscosity see this force will be equal to mg the tension here you can look this force or tension this is equal to mg force tension this tension this is equal to mg so find out this mg is see what's the mass given 0.01 kg 0.01 acceleration due to gravity 10 so this becomes 0.1 you have force now now formula f is equal to eta a dv over dx look what all the things you have force you have calculated 0.1 newton coefficient of viscosity we do not know we have to find out this we have 
area do we have the area yes 0 0.1 meter square so area is also there velocity 0 0.085 we have the velocity thickness film thickness of 0 0.3 millimeter we have this as well so we just have to substitute everything in the in the formula so eta will become f dx by a dv this will become 0 0.1 into how much was given what was the 0 0.3 millimeter 0 0.3 into 10 to the power minus 3 area is 0 0.1 velocity 0 0.085 So this, this will get cancelled. This will be 3.35 into 10 to the power minus 3. Unit will be deca poise. Hurry up. Note down the solution for this. Text me. Done once complete. Any doubts you have? Any portion you didn't understand? Please get it clarified. All those who will complete till here, you can leave them. On Wednesday, we'll continue. With very few topics are left, that we'll do.